enempi ääntä, Roberto Tottu, iso jatroni, otetaan vähän enempi ääntä. No niin. Sitten jos haluatte kuvata videolle näitä, niin sekin onnistuu, tulkaa vähän lähemmäs, niin kun on kamera, niin saatte parempaa kuvaa. Ja tuota, tässä on tarkoitus tehdä sekä kuulatyötö että kiekkoja. Se siitä. Just tähän painetta sitä, että kuinka tärkeä tuo alku verrattuna. Odotellaan hetki vielä, että kiekko pääsee painamaan. All the point is because of height of release, angle of release, and then it can have something to do with aerodynamics in javelin and discus, wind, and then implement construction. So that's the mechanics. Now what we are really concentrating on from mecha mechanically is speed of release. Then from a biomechanical standpoint, we talk about through the swing, we're gonna go through the turn, we're gonna go through the sprint, or we're gonna go through the power position, or we're gonna go through the release. These guys are gonna help me here, and I'm gonna explain in detail how we work with Kert and how we work with Joachim. And as Joachim is not here, I got the permission from him to use the robot. <laughs> they even look the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm going to talk about first and then you guys are going to try to do this with me, I'm going to explain this first to you, and that is to find your comfortable stance. That is very important in throwing, that is, what is your stance in the, in the beginning of the throw? You can stand very really wide. Gert doesn't stand that way, and if you take Tamart, he actually stands like this, and Jason talks. It's a different way of coaching for different coaches that have made that, but I say, your position is the position you feel comfortable in. As simple as that. That is the first point there. Make sure the low point of the discus, that is more related to discus, it is in straight in front of you when you swing. Keep feet fixed during the back swing. I'm going to show this to you first. And uh, it's kind of hard to hold this and show. Can you hold this? I'm going, to I'm going to show you this first. And then those guys are going to try to do it. The fixed or the, the stance, I usually explain like this. You jump up in the air and you land. This is your stance. Here you can play tennis, here you can play soccer, here you can throw shot to distance. This is your stance. This, this feels comfortable. Okay? Make sure the low point of the discus, now I talk more discus than shot, but the principle is the same. Is in front of you. Look at this. The low point is in front of you. We come back to that later. A lot of young people have the low point here. From my point of view, that's wrong because of momentum. It's very hard to bring up long range of motion and momentum that way. So basically, the low point of the discus or the shot is in front of you. And then, fixed feet during the back swing. What is that? If we took most of throwers from a biomechanical standpoint, you have to build energy in the swing. That means that you swing as far as you can. And then it looks like this. Good, come in. This is a natural swing. You 
turn your feet as well as you go as far back as possible. Always as far as possible back, you build up energy. You build up kinetic energy or momentum. And also do that in shot. A lot of shot putters do. But Yogi also and Gert Cantor have similar stuff. There is a coincidence that that is. Joachim has always done that. He has a pretty much static stop. From a biomechanical standpoint, that's wrong. But he started to throw shots when he was very young and he didn't know that. He just started static. That's the reason he is throwing from a static position. When I got into his life three years ago, I thought that was a ridiculous, idiotic coach. The whole change that stuff that he had done since he was 12 years old. So I didn't change it. The reason for that Gerd Kanter has a pretty static start as well. It's a coincidence. It's just, it's not because he is the training partner of Yogi Wolfson. It's mostly because that he didn't succeed in 2003 and 2004 and I wanted to simplify his start. Biomechanically it's wrong, but it has worked for him. It's more simple to do and it looks like this. The longer range of motion is more right biomechanically, but we do it this way, and Joachim does it as well. I'm going to go through all the points, and then I'm going to coach those guys. Shoulders are leveled at all times. We don't do any dipping in any way or another. We just bend our legs, and the shoulders, right and left shoulders, are leveled at all times. Arm is loose and relaxed. There are different ways in the discus. It's, di it's not an issue in the shot. You have to hold the shot in a certain <coughs> way. But in the discus, arm is loose away from the body. So you are not holding the arm back and stretching the triceps in the discus. In the shot put, you just hold it here, you have no choice. So there are different ways of holding the discus back you even hold it and stretch your triceps, but we have it like a rubber band and we swing it. So it's actually loose. You breathe in at the end of the back swing. That is pretty simple and that's pretty natural to everybody. Separation between arm, arms is very important in the discus and also in the shot. What I mean there is that when you go back, in the back swing, your arm is in front of you. It's the same as your walking does in the shot put. And you have as much separation between those two as possible, right and left arm. Head follows your shoulders. That's very, very tough to do for most young people. But when you walk out on the street, you don't walk like this and look up. You don't walk like this or this or this. The shoulders follow your head. So when you are in front here, the head is here. When you go here, the head is here. When you turn here, the head is here. Okay? Now I'm going to coach those guys on all those points. If you guys stand here, have certain stands. So what stands is the most comfortable for you? Okay, you get that. Make sure that the low point of the implement is in front of you. You show me, Robert, how you swing, and that you swing like you swing. Okay. Looks pretty good. Simple. That is because the biggest momentum, and what we are trying to do in the, in the start, is to build energy to get as long range of motion and momentum in the start and that's easy to do if the moment, if the weight of the, the implement is in front of you, the lowest point. Keep feet fixed during the back swing. Now I don't know how you do Robert, but 
Joachim, he just stands in his feet like this, holds the left arm like this, and then he goes 10 centimeters back. I want you to do that, even though it's not your technique. Okay? Begin to start to sit down pretty much upright, like this, and then you just go there, very little. Okay? Stretch this arm a little bit more, there, and don't lean that much more. There. That's pretty much your to start position. Gert, you show us your fixed feet fin during the back swing. You see, he's not turning the right leg or the right foot or the left foot. It's just fixed. So the arm just goes as far back as it can with fixed feet. It's very simple. Both guys, Joachim and Gert, they do this. It's not totally biomechanically right, but very simple to do. It makes the start shorter, and that's the negative thing about it, but so far so good. Weight is shifted a little bit from the left to the right, but it's mostly in between your feet. Okay? Some guys, if you take Jürgen Schulte and the discus, or Jimmy Nordin from Sweden, that used to have a very good technique in the shot put, they put totally all the weight on the right leg when they came over here. We all know Jürgen Schulte when he grabs the tree and goes all the way over here. We don't do that with full respect for Jürgen. We keep mostly the weight in between the feet and then we shift a little bit to the right. Okay, good. There's a little shift but mostly the concentration is to have the weight in between the legs. Times. I saw Robert, you probably do. Can you show me your back swing, how it is? I feel yes. Yeah, how, how you do it. Yeah. You're dipping it a little bit more in the back swing here than Joachim does. And you're also going further like this. Now I'm going to show you how he does it. You try to follow me. Here, 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 here. There is no dipping like this. That's at, at least the idea. Sometimes he doesn't do it. Yeah, do you show me your level of shoulder work so you don't dip? You see, it's totally straight. It just rotates around and the shoulders are level at all times. Make sure hips are strong and stable. This is actually a big, big, big point. What does that mean? Make sure hips are strong and stable. When Gert has had problem with throwing uncontrolled, it's mostly because of it is in back in his back swing. He sticks his hands a little bit out like this, instead of being strong here. So you have to have the center of gravity over base here, but not out of bounds. Because if you come in the back swing here, and you break your hip like this, then you're going to cut across the left in the start. So what I'm talking about is when you go in your back swing, let's say that you do it your working way, and you do it your way, and you cannot at all break this hip here. It has to be very, very strong. You just go up and down with the hip very strong. Okay? This is very crucial for him in the back swing. So when he gets overexcited, he breaks the hip here, cuts across, gets the orbit too high and throws out of control. So this is one of the biggest points in the start of the throw is the hip to be strong in the hip in the back swing here and not break it like this. Arm is loose, that is pretty much like doesn't have to do too much with Robert here. Breathe in at the end of the back swing and then the separation between the arms. Look at Gert when you do it, do like five back swings. And then you see the left arm is in front of you, the right arm is right in the back. 
So when you see him from this, where you are, you can see this arm is in front and this arm is in the back. It's very simple and I call that separation between the arms. You actually build up momentum like that. And head follows your shoulders. Robert, show me how you do your swing. And I'm going to look at your head. See? He's not like going too much from here like that. That's very usual among young throwers. But instead of getting around in the start, the head goes in front. And because of that, they don't get the long range of motion over the left in the start. Now I want you to swing 10 times. And I'm going to take Robert first and try to make you to your emotion. So everybody understands it. What I've said now, you try to do. Okay? Yeah? Do it again. Yeah? Okay? Here, he holds the hand like this. And he sticks it pretty much out. Very long, like this. He sits pretty upright down, like this. A little bit forward. And then he only goes 10 centimeters. I know it's hard for you. Hold, hold this here. And just go do do. Yes. And at the same time, you go a little bit up here, a little bit down here. See? Low point in front of you. So, a little bit up, a little bit down. Yeah? Okay? Fixed feet, no whatsoever turn of the feet. Okay? Okay? Yeah? That is pretty much how Yoga can fix his thought. I try this summer, and he is willing for next year to get more energy in the start. So what I've been trying to let him do for the last year is to go 50 centimeters here to get more energy. And he is willing to do that for this year. And you show us then, Robert, how you do it. Yeah, from a biomechanical standpoint, this is much better. Then we can ask ourselves, why does he can throw further than Robert? That's a big question. That's probably nothing to do with this. Because you are doing a pretty good start. If we take Gert, and you do like five swings, Gert. That's pretty much the same. He doesn't really move his feet. He lifts his left heel a little bit. But otherwise, it's pretty much open here all the time. He doesn't do anything like this, like Wolfgang used to do, like Wilkins used to do. Here, looks very good. Gert, he keeps his left leg open. Like this, just lifts the heel, keeps the hip strong. That is pretty much the start, the way we work. And uh, then we go to the turn now, and then it starts to get complicated. All this stuff is basic, but I'm just trying to explain to you how we think it from the two different aspects. The start of the shot put rotation of a yogi when the discus for Gert is the main thing. That is where we put pretty much 90% of the time. So the next aspect of the throw is the most important thing. You can't really do anything in the sprint, power position or release if this next part is not right. And even this part that we already talked about, but if we do that part right, the problem usually comes in this next part. So this next part here is absolutely the crucial part of the throw, and where we spend all our time. I have to say that Joachim is very, very good on that part. Actually, actually I think he's the best shot put in the world on that part. Gert is getting there. He's getting better and better slowly every year. And we're going to look at this. If you don't see it, I'm going to read it for you. Start turn on the left foot when the discus are shot 
is comfortably behind you. And it's pretty easy. You go all the way back as far as you go, and then you start to turn with separation. That's basic, okay? You can show me that even here. Go back, Robert with the shot, and you with the discus skirt, and then you start to throw, to turn. You didn't do it there, Robert. <laughs> Put this in the back swing on a zero here, and then you turn the foot and open up. Okay? So you actually get a reverse V here. So you open up here, this one and this one. Okay? Yet you do the same. That's pretty good. You see, the right foot does not turn in the start here. You come in the back swing, then you turn the left without moving the right. If you move the right here, the foot, then you lose momentum. Because we are trying to get as wide right leg as possible. If I was your coach, I can see right away that you have a little problem there. Okay? Turn the left foot, do not roll around it. You are rolling a little bit around the left foot. You have to turn on the foot. There is a lot of throws that turn on the outside or the inside of the foot. Try to turn on the ball of the foot. So in this next drill, turn on the ball of the foot as high as you can without moving and lose the balance of the foot like this. It's very usual that people roll around the foot instead of turning the foot. Show me. Yeah, that's much better. There you are actually active on the foot because the foot is supposed to be the leader of the turn with the maximum separation here. And if you're not active on the foot and the foot and you're out of balance already here on the on the side of the foot, you're actually losing balance and center of gravity is gonna be wrong and you're gonna have a terrible throw. Can you show me this too? Where you turn the foot without moving the right leg. Okay? He's not the best in the world on this. Joachim has a problem also with the left foot. But right foot stays fixed. Robert, now you show me how you do it. And I'm going to look at it. Okay, that is pretty much the same way. The right foot here stays fixed. It doesn't move at all. Same thing with Garrett. Look at the right foot. It's just fixed and open. So when he starts to turn the left foot, this one points out like this, and that makes maximum range of motion with the right leg. <coughs> Create this reverse V. Reverse V is the letter V, upside down, here, in the back of the circle. What does that mean? We are not creating any reverse V, if you come like this, see, there's no reverse V here, there's reverse V here. That means that we come from here, get to the lowest point here, and there is separation, and this leg does not turn, the foot does not turn. So you get the maximum range of motion with the right leg by pointing the foot out. Okay? Robert, you show me. I'm gonna stand right in front of you and see if you get the reverse me. No. So you're actually, because he's so young, he's rushing. You are rushing a little bit. So I'm gonna call to you. Get, come here and hold the microphone. Okay. What Robert is doing, he's moving the center of gravity too much over here, too early. So I want you to do is here, you go a little bit up, and then you come down, and get the reverse V in front of you. You're moving too much over here, too early. Just move up and down, up and down, like this. And then you go out here.
Right. <coughs> yeah, a little bit earlier. So when you come here in the vaccine, come down here. Don't do this. See, first down and then around. Yes, it makes the maximum range of motion and you're gonna get much more momentum in the start. Otherwise you're gonna be rushing with your left shoulder and you're gonna get less separation in the power position. Do you understand me? So, back swing, Robert. Back swing as long as you want to. Let's just coach you now. Do that, stop there. And then when you come from here, you go a little bit down and out. There, see? Instead of just going over here. It doesn't help at all if the right leg is not long. The right leg has to be long to get momentum in the start. Can you show us this? There. We have worked on this for years, and he's actually pretty good on this now. So he gets the reverse V, and right in front of you guys over here. So you can see that the right leg is not going too early, and he is opening the left, and he's just sitting up and down without moving the weight too much over here, like that. Okay? This is going to create a totally automatic release. <coughs> Get on the toe of the right foot and thrust the hip out. This, when Joachim threw his personal record 2163 in Tallinn three years ago, he did this outstanding. I've never seen him do it after that, because it's one reason or another. So what we are doing is like this. You come here, or here. You turn, and then we have the reverse V here. Then the next step is the right leg, is when you keep on turning the left, you go on the toe on the right, without moving it this way. You go on the toe on the right, and you thrust the hip this way. That makes it the, absolutely the widest possible right leg and hip, and it goes around you. This is the toughest thing to do in discus and rotation of shot put. The best, there are two guys in discus that I've seen that have done this extremely well, and one of them, one of them is a discus and a shot put. One is young, and one is a legend. The legend is Wolfgang Smith. He's the best ever I've ever seen do this thrust of the hip out here with a right open leg. The young guy, as probably a lot of people don't know, is El Kasevitz from Croatia. If you find him on the internet, you can really see from the shot put standpoint and discus that he does this really well. Extremely technically good start. So Robert, I don't know how you think it, but I'm going to coach you how we do it. That when you come here, and you just learn to go down here instead of just shifting over here, you go down, and then at the same time as you turn the left foot, you go this way. Here. On the toe, on the right, without moving it at all. No, you're moving it. You see? He's moving it this way. Don't move it this way. Hold it like this. Go with a knee out here. Turn the left foot. At the same time as you turn the left foot. No. T take it out here. See? Not this way. Because then you have a much narrower right leg. And that's just going to get you less momentum. Okay? Try it. This is fixed. You turn the left and out. Yes, better. Again. This is fixed. Then, and hip out too, see? So it actually happens like this, here. Good, show us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the best shot for that I've seen do this is actually over here. So Andrew Kreld has a biomechanical analysis on him since three years ago, or two, two and a half years ago. And that 